once I got here and uh, felt all warm and fuzzy and extended the, the hand of friendship that was mentioned earlier, um, I started to wonder whether the poem, that is my public comment, might be too feisty. But let me say that never once in the eight years that the Pitchfork Rebellion thing has been going on, never once have I been against anything myself. I'm only talking about me. Never once have I been against anything except for I wanted an aerial spray buffer zone around homes and schools of however much the scientific testing shows should happen to keep it from getting in the people. That's all I've ever asked for. None of the local farmers would be affected by anything that I've asked for because you're not using aerial spray. But with that, and this isn't too lengthy, about one year ago today, Park received a question from Day. Park did not reply that day, but that question won't go away. I'm asking it again today. Near Triangle Lake, April 8 and 19, did Weyerhaeuser spray atrazine. Three aerial sprays occurred on those days. So tell us, what did they spray? This much is known, testing has shown, our levels spiked after the sprays. Preliminary, preliminary records say that Weyerhaeuser planned to spray last April 8th and 19th, 2,4-D and atrazine. Not coincidentally, I'd say, when tested the very next day, there was more atrazine and 2,4-D in this test subject's pee. That seems suspicious to me. So I decided to see what sort of power is held by Weyerhaeuser that makes Dale Mitchell of Park bark when industry says bark. <laughs> I found that the cards they are holding that makes government beholden aren't black or red, but are golden. Oregonians for Food and Shelter, in their October newsletter, thank certain individuals politicians and agency officials for helping the pesticide lobby influence this pesticide study. They thank Roseburg politician Bruce Hanna, which at first drove me bananas. Roseburg is far from Triangle Lake. I wondered, is he on the take? I googled his name in Weyerhaeuser, and though I'm no whiz kid Doogie Hauser, I found the link between Hannah and Weyerhaeuser. It's the usual hat trick of high power. They gave Hannah $20,000, but it doesn't stop there. I found the same thing everywhere. Lane County Commissioner Jay Balazich, his campaign is getting rich. Google his contributions and you'll have your solution to the question I have asked. The answer is now unmasked. What did Weyerhaeuser spray April 8 and 19? It was 2,4-D and atrazine. Why won't Park admit it? I think now you can figure it. But I'll ask the question once more before Dale Mitchell runs out the door. What were in the Weyerhaeuser sprays on those specific days? Why did not Park investigate? Even now, it's not too late. If Dale won't do it, he should be fired. But I won't hold my breath, because Oregon Ag is wired. Thanks, folks. Friend the gates. Friend the gates. Oh. That's you. Uh, I have a comment, oh, so I mean, if you're, we've discovered now that if I've got, if you've got driftwood and it has sea salt on it and it burns and it burns at the right temperature, it can actually form dioxin. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, who knew that dioxin was naturally occurring? Dioxin is formed under certain conditions, and it's a it's a fairly defined temperature range that it occurs at. But if the those conditions exist, I, yes, it's possible that it could be more. Uh, Jason, huh? 
just want to say thank you for doing this investigation and uh, I feel reassured my health is not at risk. Um, I also had, was wondering if there are continued questions about um, Dave Owens data, pre-spray data, was that 100% positive for atrazine? We, have, we do not have those data at this point. Um, we are, we have what, what has been shared um, other places. Uh, so we, I, I can't answer that question. Well, well yes, on day Owen, at 100% of the 45 people tested had atrazine in them in the spring, right after we're out of the spring. And in the winter How about as well? January? In January, we're asking them to look at the spray records and see who locally used atrazine, and then your question that you're going at, you know, will make sense because we'll see whether anyone used it prior to that spray. But what showed up in your atrazine two forty January in both tests? Both right. tests. And I talked to Kevin weeks before he left, and he told me that they expect be getting the spray records out to or the OHA by the end of why, April. Why, why did this OHA test show no atrazine? Because they Whereas did it six months later. They did it six months after any atrazine was used for this reason. Even though in the winter, that was <coughs> the spray season, they because there was no fear by the people using the spray that any testing was going on, there was, I'm sure the spray records are going to show, atrazine uses that weren't very far from the January test. But once that got announced well, in the newspaper... What do you mean very far? Time-wise? They'll be able to tell you exactly. It won't be speculation. They'll tell you exactly... exactly uh, no, but nobody... Mike... Do you guys work out when you have the information you're fighting about? In this January or December. It's yeah, it was stay in our body for a long right? time, huh? But it is possible that someone did. We don't know who. I mean, it's so possible that somebody spread in July. It's possible that it just spread every month. Why are the people getting yeah. poisoned being economically compensated by the people? Yeah, what about our just my, question, my question is, I, I would like to learn more about uh, the data, and it does, doesn't seem to line up with the OHA data. I'm sorry. Can you hear you want to know more about what? Okay, the OHJ data said nobody has atrazine in their system, right? and his pre-spray data says everybody got atrazine. Theirs was right. done six months after atrazine was used because once it got in the newspaper, everyone was afraid to use it, afraid that they'd get financially sued or something. Right. And in fact, we have public records that are showing that Park actually is advising um, uh, the timber companies. And the spray operators as to how not to get, uh, not to have a lawsuit, not to be sued for what they're doing. I can provide those that information to you. That is absolutely false. Well, it's in oh, your public records, man. Ken Orloff told me in person. That is absolutely false. So we're trying to how, right, how to figure out how to write up the liabilities. That is absolutely false. Just let the guy finish. Let him finish. You, you want you want you're looking for a, a way to reconcile. The information that we had at this point with what the information that um, that was contained in the in the bar results. Right. At this point, we don't have the bar results, so we can't really we can't begin that reconciliation process. But that's actually a lot of what we're trying to to get to is to be able to understand what those initial results told us. Getting the application records will be very helpful in understanding those bar results. If we get the bar results directly, it'll be even more helpful in understanding those bar results. Well, okay, why, and why, don't, why, don't, don't, why don't you release the data to them? Yeah. yeah. Why? No, 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 I want you to hear this. Uh, this is important. You release the data? <laughs> this is important. We've been begging them the whole time to please accept the data, and they didn't do it. And then finally this spring, when industry dodged the bullet and didn't spray, they turned around and told us recently that, okay, we'll accept the data, but we'll do it under this certain condition that Dr. Barr has to provide all the data herself and Jay, all that. Jay, answer the question. Have you received it? Have you received it, John? I, I'd really like to answer the question. Oh, yes. okay. Okay. I'm going to take a seat. Go ahead. So initially, then, Initially, when, uh, when the bar results were reported out, um, we were told that those, bar, those results were not going to be made available to the investigation. 
Um, we had we had no real understanding of how those uh, samples had been collected. Uh, there was a very sort of open question about the chain of custody of those those uh, results. We talked with Dr. Barr herself. And she said the the um, this was not a controlled investigation. Uh, and, you know, she could tell us about the analytic processes, but that was really all she could tell us. Um, and the, the and what she also told us is that she didn't own those data. She couldn't release them to us. Only the individuals could release them to us. She didn't know who even who their names what their names were. Um, and so we just proceeded on to, to to launch the investigation. Later in the year, it was in uh, late fall. We had a conversation about uh, whether or not we were approached by by day and asked. You know, would you take these results? At that point, we were sort of the investigation was underway, and uh, we were sort of busy with other things. Um, and when we began to realize uh, that um, there might be some ways that we could use those data, uh, what kind of resources might might we need to even figure out how usable those data were? Um, that was when we began to think about, uh, okay, what would it take? Uh, and what it would take would be contacting each of those people who were involved in that in that sampling, get their specific consent to have to use those data, and then convert those over to a request to, to Dr. Barr. So that's the process that we're on, in right now. To, and we have we don't have everybody. We have a, a select number of people people who volunteer to have. So we still have to deal with the whole chain of custody issue. We still have to deal with the laboratory issue. It's, you know, it was, it, it's a very uh, it's a very open question at this point, but we're exploring. Okay, thank you. So, okay. And Dr. Barr didn't tell us what herbicides she was going to check for. She just had us go to the hospital uh, laboratory. They took the samples, and she never told us she was looking for atrazine or 2,4-D. Okay, so, uh, we got a few more people. Melinda, Drago. Hi, my name is Malia Drago. I've lived in this community for 14 years. I am raising five children in this community. I think it is a wonderful place to raise children. I would like to thank you guys for doing the study and the test. It puts to rest some of my fears that, oh my goodness, maybe we are being poisoned. But after hearing the state results, I'm not so concerned or worried anymore. Baseline samples. What I am more concerned about is when you challenge the right of the Oregon um, Farm and Forest Act and you maybe take away people's rights, that then maybe it might take away another right, like the freedom of speech. Or they maybe, got immunity. Or maybe another right, like the freedom of religion, or maybe another right. So um, I want to thank you for your time and your effort into our community, and um, we appreciate it. I see that there is a lot of confusion actually here. Uh, the, the, of course, you know we're really grateful for the efforts that have been put towards finding out the truth. On the team, there's a lot of uh, wonderful, wonderful people here that are interested in truth. And uh, we stand for the truth as well. And uh, the concern is that there's a lot of confusion happening on uh, one side of the community. And uh, the side of community that has been uh, gathered by Paulette from Oregonians for Food and Shelter. She's been hiding back there. Paulette uh, is, works for the lobby group called Oregonians for Food and Shelter. Their board of directors, and blessings to you, uh, their board of directors is actually Monsanto, the very makers of many of these chemicals that we have been uh, talking here about. Also Dow Chemicals, Syngenta that produces atrazine that was in, found in my body and body of my family and many of our friends and children. 
Um, this is a powerful lobby organization that lobbies and uses the industry that is funded by corporate science. And so when you compare the corporate science with the independent science, there's quite a lot of difference. And so the corporate science tells us that it's okay uh, to use their products. Surprise. They also tell us that it's okay to, everybody has these things in their bodies and it's okay. We have no fear, just you know. We have, our emotions are clear, our emotions are harmonious, and we have no fear. We do value science that has not been funded by the very people that produce these chemicals. Profit. And for profit. We value health, and we put health before weeds, because there is a good way to control weeds in a healthy manner that does not put anyone's health at risk. We value your health. Unfortunately, and sadly, looking at many people that have come up here, and um, I do diagnosis by, this is my profession, just uh, Chinese diagnosis by eyes, many different things, and so wonderful 5,000 year old uh, method of doing diagnosis. And I see certain people that are uh, here that are not making connection to certain things that I see they're going through. It's just a, something I do every day. I look at everyone and I start diagnosing because that's my profession. So I, I basically see a lot of people that say these things that don't see the connection. But if you look at the science that is independent, and in fact, new science and cutting edge, it does not support what the corporate science is telling us about these things. And then we have statistics, and uh, as a society, we're waking up, and we will wake up to it. And uh, I'm saddened to see um, Oregonians for Food and Shelter come into our community, gather up the people that think that they must use these products because, for, for, because they work. Well, let me tell you, atomic bomb works. But is it wise to use atomic bomb? So I'm saddened to see so much division and them gathering up the people that I can see have health challenges and that I wish that would be healthy and well. And um, I'm saddened to see the the way they do, they do these things. So, in regards to the your question, Jason, uh, why did our data not compare to the OJ data? Um, well, we have been explaining here for a while that industry did not spray those chemicals when they took the the samples. So, the industry has avoided using the very chemicals that, only two chemicals that these <coughs> devoted people are able to test for, 2,4-D and atrazine. The industry purposely avoided spraying them. So to answer your question, their data was baseline, meaning that they weren't expecting to even find 2,4-D in our bodies. They were not expecting, as they stated, they were not expecting to find 2,4-D. And they also say uh, that this chemical is supposed to leave our body. Well, if it's supposed to leave our body, and I eat only organic, why is it still there? I don't use it. So if it's supposed to leave the body, what is causing this chemical in the baseline sample to still be there, detected. Yes. Now, to answer your question, uh, the reason why the spring study has been uh, detoured, I would call, even though for a wonderful devotion to find out the truth, the reason why it has been 
actually detoured is because the industry decided to not use those chemicals this spring around the area of testing. So if they're so uh, confident in their data, and if they're so confident in their in their what they're telling us, well, why not spray them so that we can see and get the science right? Because again, we are interested in science. We're not interested in, uh, and particularly the reason why we're not interested in corporate science is because again, uh, it's a it's we there's it's just an issue to have a producer actually give us the science. We're more interested in independent science, and let me tell you, I've been spending so long of hours researching, and researching, and researching. There's so much evidence. And now this is not to cause fear. We have no fear. We want the truth, and we only want the truth. And again, we have no emotional challenges. Nor we small, like we have been labeled all kinds of names and things like that. A religious thing. We have been called that we're in a cult. There has been there has been rumors about us that you couldn't even believe it. But again, we rise above the rumors. We are interested to see science that is independent. And uh, recent research that is from twelve uh, scientists that many of you have gotten in your mail. And I choose to know if you even looked at it because if you do choose to read that science, those are credible independent researchers that have no ties uh, or profit from this product. So you can look at that science and uh, credible scientists that have found that these low levels are actually a huge challenge for hormones. And so any of you making comments that you're doing well and all that, we're, we're very happy for you. You know, and so, but there is evidence and there is many, many, um, many, many uh, studies done and have shown, have been shown in our own experiences. And we're here to speak for our own experiences and our own health challenges that we have seen from the, from the exposure. And they do link up. We actually have connected dots because again, we're interested in truth and science. And we have connected the dots of our experiences to the independent research. So um, what is going to happen to one person and another? We can't, uh, we can't have, we don't know, because again, we have different metabolism, different backgrounds, different, all kinds of things. So uh, we're just saddened to, to see that the industry would come to with, their, with the politicians that have been supporting them to come to our neighborhood and uh, offer their science. We're not, um, we're not trusting that science. And so, <coughs> anyhow, uh, as living here six years, I believe that no matter how long you live here, you're a living being. And you know, we have Earth, Earth is our home. It's okay that some people have been here 40 years, some 30, some six. Well, it doesn't matter. We, we all call Earth our home. So um, uh, what I want to say, I've been here six years. Let me tell you, this is the first year in six years that our bees have survived. Now, five years that we've been here, we have been buying bees every single year. Now, this study comes to our neighborhood. Is it a coincidence that our bees this year survived when the industry knows that the study is happening and and uh, is it a coincidence? Now, um, as far as studying and testing, we are committed to testing as well, and a lot of a group of our um, team is professional. We have professionals that are actually so that will make the study legitimate. We are hiring people and uh, having them test the air. We're testing air. We're testing also creeks. So far in five creeks we have found pesticides and that data 
and we are continuing to uh, do the study and because we're committed to truth and science. And we, will, we actually have uh, plans to do it all over the state and uh, the air testing is happening with a high volume sampler that Elizabeth was talking about. And a uh, high volume sampler isn't, hard, isn't easy to, to put from one place to another, but we have a commitment throughout the state that we will actually be able to monitor through. We would like to see healthy jobs, and we know that we are not going to have make chemical companies happy. We know that our ways of managing land uh, that is that is uh, again not that isn't chemical because again, from my research, independent research, not the corporate uh, science. From my research, uh, you can only use chemicals if you live in vacuum. If you eliminate the air movement, if you eliminate the water, precipitation, so good luck, you know, and so that's where I'm here for to ask that healthy forest management. Now you are intelligent people, Oregonians for food and shelter. You can make much, much better and healthier, healthier solution and resolution for our communities. You can bring in the healthy jobs for managing the brush by hand. You can form a healthy forest by, uh, by, you have intelligence to figure it out. So we can bring the forests that are not causing the movement of these chemicals from these high hills. Now we have professionals that have have been assessing the risk of, and, and the drift and the post-application movement because we're not dealing just with the drift. We're dealing with the post-application movement. Each of these chemicals has a long shelf life uh, depending upon the weather conditions. So what happens is you have diurnal, you have fog, and so things get lift up, and, and again, we're asking, why do we have 2,4-D in us when, when nobody's spraying 2,4-D? The, you know, so there's something happening, and we'll get to it, we'll find out the truth. So anyhow, I want to extend my um, olive branch to the people that have been gathered by the big lobby group, Oregonians for Food and Shelter, and I want to extend our hearts heartfelt friendship to all of you that one day you will be, you as well will find out the truth. And God bless you, God bless us all, and may we all find the way to serve the truth. Thank you. Uh, my neighbor, Jeff Newman, had to leave, but uh, it's sad. It's sad what our world has come to, this insanity, complete insanity, on both sides. We're all insane. Every single one of you is insane. To go this far, look yourself in the mirror. Look yourself in the mirror tonight. Every single one of you go home and look yourself in the mirror. Because the mirror does not lie. It does not lie. You can lie to your neighbors. You can lie to the other person. But the mirror does not lie. I put the olive branch out to the younger generation. I just met you tonight. You look like a nice gentleman. I think we can have a relationship in the future. And there was another gentleman that's still over here, a really large, uh, uh, robust gentleman that spoke out. That was amazing. Amazing what he said. And I shook his hand outside. Because that's what we do. We need to bring this community back together. We need to bring this community back together. Whether you've been here for 40 years or 6 years, it does not matter. Nobody's an outsider. This earth is moving constantly. People are moving, 
vegetation is moving, the air is moving, the water is moving. So nobody's an outsider. Because everyone in here is an outsider, I tell you. Every single one of you is an outsider. None of you have been here since the beginning. So, we ask you, we are concerned about a mass appear in the water. Is anybody, anybody concerned about a mass appear in the school water? Anyone? Of course. How can you not be concerned about a mass appear in the school water? Just because they found a rat? Because a rat says it's okay? Well, the chemical industry says it's okay. No, silence. Silence. I'm speaking. So basically, is that there's a massacre in the water, the school water. That's insanity. If anyone in this room can look at me and tell me that children can drink a massacre in the water, I don't care how little it is. I don't care. I'm not a rat. And I speak to all of you. I love all of you and I respect everything you're doing. But go home and look in the mirror. Every single one of you, and I'm not talking, and I'm talking to this lady over here. Look in the mirror. Because we are all facing this together. Every single one of us. Every single one of us. And the finest smirks on the faces of these officials in the back room, I watched you, sir. You represent the people. Start serving the people. Yahoo. I mean this. I've never seen you before, but it's disrespectful what you do back there. No, don't give me that look because it's 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 it's, it's unethical, and there will be people in these agencies put in prison because of what you do and the games you play. Look in the mirror. I'm telling you, look in the mirror. I am done with this. And silence. Silence all this. Silence. 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 We all live here. Everybody lives here. And we're living here together. This is not war. This is not war. We're trying to find out the truth. We're trying to find out the truth. Sit down. This is my speaking time. Sit down. So please, I ask you to all look in the mirror. Every single one of us. And get to the truth. Because we're all sick. Every single one of us is sick. Every single one of us is sick in this room. Every single one of you. The prescription drugs, go to your doctor. They tell you this. So please, people, please. My neighbor has been diagnosed with cancer. That, that, that really hardens my heart to hear something like that. It's, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable that we've given up at 60 years of age. We as people have given up at 60 years of age. And it's a younger generation that's going to carry this forward. We need to carry this forward. We need to protect our children. We protect them from the massacre. We have to protect them from this stuff. Just move the well. well so what? We got it in the water. Move on. Move up to the next well. Do something different. But don't let the children drink the massacre. Please don't let them drink the massacre. I pray for us. I pray for us. I pray for us. I pray for us. God bless you. We're, we're, we're nearing the finish line here. We've got three more people. Uh, Ray Wilbur. Ray Wilbur. Ray, is Ray, Ray still here? Yes. Yeah, okay. Still here. Well, that was hard act to follow, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> I was uh, born in 1939, and uh, back then everything was organic. I lived on an organic farm in Iowa. Sure. And by the time I was about seven or eight years old, my father one day was spraying 2,4-D and a sprayer because the county wing commissioner came around and said, you must spray these weeds or we will spray them for you and charge you. It'll be so much you go out of business. So, okay, dad says, I'll spray the weeds. So I'm running along behind the sprayer when he didn't see me because I thought he was spraying water. I'm like eight years old, I didn't know. <laughs> So it's like fine to me. It's a hot summer day. I want he sp uh, spraying the wheat. I I didn't know. I thought he was just spraying what meat. So he jumped off the tractor and says, "This is a terrible, evil poison. Get the hell away from it." He never cursed me at me ever in my life except two times. I won't tell you what it was. <laughs> but that time he told me to get the hell away from him and never come back when he was spraying these weeds because it's a terrible, evil poison. He knew it, but he had to do it. I went to sleep that night, or 
a night similar to it, listening to the radio. Better Living Through Chemistry is coming over the radio. We didn't have TV. So I heard this pretty much every day, Better Living Through Chemistry. It inspired me so much that I went out and I got a degree in chemistry. By the time, the same year I graduated from college with a degree in chemistry, my mother died of colon cancer that went into her liver from the 2,4-D, no doubt in my mind. My father lasted a few more years. My next older brother, he started selling these poisons. That was his way of compensating for the fact that he was an alcoholic and couldn't keep the farm together very well, so he, he sold all these poisons, agricultural poisons, and uh, he lasted a few more years before he died of lung cancer that went into his brain. My next older brother from him died in the same way, lung cancer, because of breathing these chemicals, and it went to his brain. He died. Of, this is the four closest to me people in my family. You want to tell me about how this stuff doesn't hurt you, you can go ahead, but you're being fooled if you really believe that this, can't, this, uh, this uh, study that was done to establish a baseline, and so the baseline is established, and it doesn't show elevated levels of, of uh, stuff in the blood and the urine. Elevated compared to what? It's a baseline study. To think that that means anything, to take any comfort from a baseline study, is absolute meaningless. You've been fooled. It means nothing, nothing. I am a chemist. I study. I know what I'm talking about. He's over here. We have, we're having people who are afraid to say what they think because their jobs are on the line. They can say things as a scientist. They walk up to the wall and won't tell us the truth because they know better. Their jobs on the line. Okay, 2,4-D. If you want a recipe for creation of 2,4-D, here is the recipe. I'm a chemist. Believe me. Or go look it up yourself. Spray it on the vegetation, burn it at low temperature, you will create dioxin. Now maybe about it. That's the recipe for dioxin. Dioxin persists forever, as far as we know, and it will cause cancer and, and problems forever. The wonderful movie that was out years ago about, uh, God, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Well, in Vietnam, they sprayed napalm all over everything. South of the line, I flew over Vietnam in 1970. And south of this line across the country, everything was brown and been sprayed with 2,4-D, 2,4-H, laced with liberal amounts of dioxin. Then they, then they go out and, and uh, napalm went in the morning because that crazy general loved it, wherever these idiots were that did this. That's why there's so much cancer in that state, I mean, in that country, that's the way it works. Well, that's what our mountains look like. You get up yeah. there. So, like. so that's what, when I came back after, right. after years in Southeast Asia, I came back here and I find, what are they doing here? They're doing the same goddamn thing yeah, here. They They're spraying Asian orange all over the jungles here. So we fought it for years and we stopped them from spraying it in the federal lands. But they can still spray 2,4-D because you, if you're a private person, you can go buy in a store and buy it. Yeah, free damn store in the in the town will sell you 2,4-D. You spray it on your wood, you burn it. There will be fire in the woods. You spray 2,4-D in the woods, you will create dioxin. We're asked to believe that there's not a big problem here. I say that if half the people in this room are going to die of cancer, that's a problem. If this, if the EPA got a real information and they acted upon it, that would be one thing. But they get corporate information, and they. The corporations, they go to this Monsanto and say, you give us this, we got 120 documents you want. I believe this was atrazine six years ago. They said, we want 120 documents. And uh, Monsanto said, well, okay, we'll give you all the information that we can, but it's proprietary information. So they gave them uh, 18 documents. Or well, what about the other 112 documents or whatever? So, well, that's proprietary. We can't tell you. Well, what about the independent research that's been done? Well, we can't uh, rely on that because independent research isn't what we use. We use the documents that are given to us by the corporations who are profiting from poisoning everybody. Well, I want to occupy a non-toxic world, and the only way we could do that is to have the EPA do studies on this that make us safe instead of just make it safe for people to make a profit on poisoning and destroying half the people's lives in this room and in every damn city and, and place on this, in this country are going to die of cancer. There's a reason for it. 
occupy a non-toxic world. That's what I say. 99% of us here want that. Until you can sort out this mess. Mila. That's yes. all we're asking for is to establish a moratorium Mila. until the mess can get Mila. sorted Mila. out. Mila. A moratorium. Mila. Thank you all. I'm so glad to have this opportunity. Mila, to, so glad to have this opportunity to um, make new friends and to be with old friends. I would like to share with you my reason for being here. I was given a gift, a gift of life. And I love the gift that I have been given. I love my life. I love my family. I love my children. I have five of my own and one adopted daughter. And I love them all dearly. And I want only the best for my children. I want only the best community, the best food, the best air, the best water, everything. On October 12th of 2007, a Friday, I had gone out to do my chores and there was Roseburg timber spraying on a clear cut just about a mile west of me. Quarter mile actually. About a quarter mile west. I took four hours of exposure that day and was terribly, terribly sickened. I won't go into all the details right now about that because I want to tell you about some other exposures that I took besides that day. But I can assure you that I am telling you the very truth, that I was sickened by that exposure that day by Roseburg Timber on October 12th, and that exposure took months and months for it to get out of my system on many, many levels. Um, the following spring, they sprayed again, Roseburg Timber sprayed again the same hillside. Myself and my children were also affected by that spray. Last spring, in 2011, in March on the 19th, April, excuse me, April 18th, Roseburg Timber did a spray just a mile east of us. Again, I was terribly, terribly sickened. And I'm only here to tell you the truth. I, that's what I'm here for, only to tell the truth. This stuff is dangerous. It definitely drips, and it definitely causes health problems. I came here eight years ago healthy, strong, vibrant, happy, and I had never experienced the types of symptoms in my life ever that I experienced after Roseburg Timber poisoned me and my farm and my family, and after um, Warehouser has poisoned me. It's obvious. I wake up feeling fine. They spray. I get sick. And it lasts four months. Seneca Jones did a ground spray last spring just, um, I, I believe it was in, in April or May. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have the exact date. But I could find that if you needed to know. Seneca Jones did a ground spray uh, not too far from us, just a couple of miles from us. A quarter mile again. I could smell it on my land. As I was milking my goats that morning at 8 a.m. in the morning, I came in and I told my husband and family, I said, I smell chemicals. I don't know what's going on, but I can smell them. Sure enough, we found out later that day that Seneca Jones had sprayed, a ground spray. I was so sick from that. I was bedridden. I couldn't, I had lost my appetite. I had terrible pains in all of my joints. It took months. The, the chemicals settled down into my kidneys and caused kidney pain. This, these chemicals are for real. And they are very dangerous. Now maybe some of you, for some reason, your bodies haven't noticed it, or maybe you're just not sensitive enough to notice when you're having kidney pain or when you're having joint pain, or you know, maybe you never knew what it felt like to feel healthy and you've just always been, you know, you know, not healthy. But I can assure you, I came here healthy, and after getting a poisoned and exposed to these chemicals, my health degenerated. Because I know of 
I study health, and I study health foods, and I study about how to be healthy. I've been able to pull myself up by the bootstraps and regain my health. And I've had to work very hard at it. And I shouldn't have to work so hard. It shouldn't be so hard to be healthy. That's right. Being healthy should be easy because we take good care of ourselves. Because we love our life and we love our family and we love our children and we love the future generations to come. And we love your children. And we care about your children. And even if you don't care about the poisons that are in your children, we do. I care about the children of the future. I care about the grandchildren that might be coming through. If I care about all of that. And I do care about you. And I want to be friends with you because my ultimate goal is peace. And in order to have peace, we, we're going to need to get all along. We all need to get along. And if, if we want world peace, how do we get world peace if we can't have peace in our own community? So let's start with ourselves. We make peace with ourselves, we make peace with our community, and we attempt to make peace with our planet. Thank you. Hi folks, my name is uh, Jason, I think I'm the, I'm the last person, right? You are. Take a breath, it's almost over. <laughs> and you know, I'm not going to tell you how long I've been in the area because it doesn't matter and you all know it. And, and those of you that want to pretend that it does matter, I'd be ashamed of yourselves. Yeah. Right. You know, your grandparents came from somewhere, and you ought to be lucky that we're not going around taking stuff from each other's guns anymore like some of your grandparents probably did, right? right. Everybody came from somewhere, and we're going to go somewhere. Right. You know, I heard a bunch of folks come up here and say, oh, thanks for coming and telling us everything's okay. Anybody want to stand up and say, we're ready to say it's safe? <laughs> Who said that? Who said everything's okay? What do you think they're here for? They're saying if it's in your water, maybe there's a problem. They're not saying everything's okay. I'm not saying everything's wrong. Mosquitoes are bad. They're sure not saying everything's okay. Right? Because we don't know. That's what they got up here and said. Got a couple of bureaucrats, a couple of people that are full of crap like these guys that he was so upset about in the back room. ODF don't work for the people and everybody in this room does it. Got a couple of great scientists that stood up and said, you know what, we don't know. We don't have any scientists that stood up and said, everything's okay. So why lie about it? Why not write out the science? You say, I want to trust the science. Let's, let's write it out instead of coming out here and hating on our neighbors. You got a bunch of people say, come up here and say, you don't care about children, you... Dome rednecks, and we got a bunch of people coming out here and saying, You crazy hippies are all emotion. Can we get along? Just, well, this is insane. We're trying to wait. Look at these people a bunch of professionals, a bunch of experts. I can't believe they're out here. I can't believe they're out here. You think they're out here because they think everything's okay and, and they, you know, because eight people nagged about it? They're out here because there's a potential problem. The other thing about that is, he can't do a damn thing about it. You know what Park can do? What well, policy recommendation, right? That's it. So you know what, these people are trying to give information. I'm not a person to come up here and say, let's listen to all the bureaucrats and scientists. I won't lie to you. When I get into activism, I get into direct action. I help people go in the forest and stop stuff. In my opinion, the folks out here should be doing it. The folks out here don't want to do that, and that's okay. They want to work with these guys. And that means it's approachable to everybody, except maybe, I mean, if it's true, well, it's a lobby group in the back. Who cares about those guys? Um, they, they, you know. Everyone's are funding everything. So they're going to the governor. They're going to the people that matter, right? They're not really wasting a lot of time with most of these guys. Fighting with them, yelling at them, thanking them. They're going to the people that make decisions. They're making it happen. So let these guys get the information. If you're so convinced that everything's going to be okay, what's the big deal? Why do you got to hate your neighbors for asking? Because you know what? When you were only here for five years, what if someone came throwing stuff on you? Maybe Park's going to give you a good policy recommendation? Probably not. But these scientists, even though the APA can't do crap either, they're going to give you most likely accurate information. 
if they can figure out how to get it. It's not their fault that 10 years ago, 20 people didn't rise up in arms in Blashley and say, come up with a way to test for these chemicals. It's not their fault the process doesn't exist. It's really sad that in our country, it doesn't have to exist until 20 years, 40 years, 60 years down the road. That's sad. It's not their fault. It's the elected officials' fault, the voters' fault, people not understanding, people not learning, people not talking to each other, and people rather fight about who's lived where for how long, instead of talking about whether or not we're healthy, whether or not we're taking care of our ecosystems, whether or not we hate loggers. You log the land I live on, you don't spray crap. You know what? We got miles of roadside we don't spray on. You know what we're doing as blackberries? Bring a tractor and cut them down, plant something else, and you know what? More blackberries. You got, what is it, tansy? What are you bringing? A caterpillar? There's something you can do. How much money has been poured into this group of people being out here to find out about these chemicals? They could have paid a crew to go around with their big old hands and yank these weeds out of the ground, make some jobs, like somebody else said. It doesn't have to be so, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Chemicals are good, chemicals are bad. It don't matter, really. You can do it without them. Why not do it? You want jobs, I bet. I bet all the people that came up here saying the chemicals, we need them. I bet they're the same people that are going, and they're got elected officials, they're going and saying, why aren't you creating jobs? <laughs> Let's stop falling along these real predictable lines. Let's get out of this dirty, crazy, hippie, dumb, forest log and redneck thing. You know, there's this guy got up here I was talking about, it's been here forever. Some other people get up here and say, you know, we're not as different as we want to pretend we are. Quit being so predictable. Let's, let's quit being so predictable. Let's quit following along these lines that these lobbyists just love it. They love it. They come out here and they tell a bunch of people, go up there and say they've been here 40 years and they're new. That's how people have been fighting about stuff in Oregon for 40 years, probably. <laughs>